entered a scheduling order and notice of hearings. Ma'am, that was sent to you by way of mail. Did you receive that? I did yesterday. Okay, all right. I know that you had brought up concerns regarding mailing, and I just wanted to go through uh, the, the historics with regards to the mailing. As you may recall, back on June 28th, we had a hearing where I granted Ms. Cushman's motion to withdraw and addressed your forfeiture, or alternatively, a waiver to counsel. You were hand-delivered a copy of that order. On May 25, we had a hearing and an order was entered and a notice of hearing was set. That order was hand delivered to you. Thereafter, there was an order setting hearing that was entered on July 29. That letter, or that order rather, was sent to you at P.O. Box 9109, Seminole, Florida 33775, which is the Orange County Corrections Department mail address for general inmate mail. That was remedied the next day. On July 30th, a certificate of service was entered to the appropriate address, uh, identifying you, your inmate number, FDC-B4, PO Box 4970, Orlando, Florida, 32802, which is the um, address that you had placed in your motion and your notice. That certificate of service included the notice of filing, of the memorandum from the Orange County Corrections Department, Security Operations, and there was also a certificate of service providing you the Justice Administrative, Administrative Commission's response to motion seeking due process costs. The next mailings was a notice of mailing of documents by your former attorney, Patricia Cashman, which was the transcripts of depositions of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen, which were taken on May 7th, 2024. That was e-filed on, e on August the 1st, 2024, and emailed to you, I'm sorry, mailed to you with address to you, your inmate number, FDC, dorm B, PO Box 94970, I apologize, PO Box 4970, Orlando, Florida. Did you receive those deposition transcripts? I did. Okay. Then the notice of delivery, would you recall when you received those transcripts? Oh, everything that you are stating was received on Monday. The 5th? Correct. Okay. The next was a notice of delivery of digital copies of documents that was e-filed by your former attorney, Patricia Cashman, on August 1, 2024, which provided the transcripts of depositions of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen, taken May 7, 2024, to Billy Lane on August 1st, and that was mailed to you at the same address. Um, we've been addressing P.O. Box 4. 970 on August 1. Did you receive that notice? I'm sorry, what was sent that for? Notice of delivery of digital copies of documents, which reflected the deposition transcripts of the detectives I just identified to Mr. Lane. To be honest with you, I don't know. It was a lump sum of a, a giant amount of paperwork, and I haven't gone through it yet. Okay. They had me sign about four or five different documents, so. Okay. Or receive. And the last was a certificate of service that was just e-filed on May the 5th, which was provided to you as well on May, the, I'm sorry, August the 5th. It was provided to you on August the 5th at the P.O. box we've identified by way of U.S. mail, which was a copy of the order authorizing the defense to incur costs for private investigator and the scheduling order and notice of hearings entered August 5, 2024. Have you received both of those? I did, and I had questions on that, please, whenever. In, in just a moment, ma'am. So I know that there was an, a concern with regard to mailing and things purportedly not being timely provided to you. There was only one order, the order of July 29th, which was sent to the general mail delivery, and that was remedied the exact next day on July 30th. So that clerical error as to the wrong address was remedied one day after the original order was sent out on July the 29th. I just wanted to put that on the record and uh, again, identify for you, ma'am, that nothing's being withheld from you and everything is being timely served to you um, as required. Now, you had questions about the JAC order. I will revisit those in just a moment. I've got a, a sticky with regard to that. And I was going to say, please, if I may, about the address. There were two or three different documents that were uploaded to the tablet. So those three documents, without knowing specifically which ones they are, those were also sent to P.O. Box 9101. I don't know what you're talking about. You were talking about supposedly just one document that was mailed to the incorrect address. It was more than one. That's not correct. Court scoured the court file this morning, ma'am. The court has not filed anything other than what I've identified since that June 28th order where you were representing yourself pro se. So that is incorrect. 
Is it something that I need to record and bring back, or is it that big of a deal? Uh, I can't answer that question. That may call for me providing you legal advice. Okay. But I can't tell you that other than the July 29th order, which was remedied the next day, everything has been sent to the appropriate legal uh, mail address as provided by the Orange County Jail. Um, we've had this hearing today to address a couple of things based on the scheduling order and notice of hearing that was entered August 5. The first was the, uh, the digital evidence issue. Um, I've been advised, I think, through Mr. Lane, who I do see in the courtroom. Um, Mr. Lane, if you could come on up, sir, so Madam Clerk can swear you in. All right, Mr. Lane, good morning, sir. Can you state your full name and your affiliation with Prison Break Investigations, please? Billy Lane, Chief Investigator, owner of Prison Break Investigations. Okay. I understand part of the order uh, from Monday was regarding the state's digital evidence. Um, I understand that may have been provided on a USB drive to you, Mr. Lane. I want to hear from the state with regard to that first. So either Mr. J or Mr. Cacciatore. Yes, Your Honor. We have uh, tendered to Mr. Lane a copy of our... Uh, the exhibit list uh, with our uh, expected items of evidence that will be received along with uh, expected witnesses that, uh, to be called at the trial. Uh, a copy of that was provided on the USB with the exhibits, the witness list, um, also proposed uh, jury instructions and a stipulation as to victim ID for her uh, review as well. Okay, and when was that provided to Mr. Lane? Uh, just now. Okay, all right. Um, the witness and exhibit list that is um, included on that USB, do you have hard copies? I do, Your Honor. I would like to file them in open court. That was going to be my next question. Okay. And I have a copy for defense. Okay, very good. That's wrong. Um, Debbie Bruce, if we can get the copy of the witness list and the exhibits uh, and take that from Mr. Lane and provide it to Ms. Boone. And, you, yes. and Your Honor, uh, the state's position is that given that our exhibit list contains within it a witness list as well, we would ask that that uh, document be sealed uh, the way the witness lists are routinely sealed. Uh, a copy of that request to seal is th uh, there with the, the notice of the witness list uh, on the, uh, the initial page before the What I have in front of me is the notice of provision of witness list and then the notice of expected evidence and witnesses in trial. I don't have an order or... It's, it's, it wouldn't be an order. It would just be the, that first document you read, uh, reference, the notice of provision of witness list. Got it. Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else with regard to the expected evidence and digital evidence? No. Okay, so just for my own understanding there are nine files on the USB drive that are digital in nature. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. And those are all on the USB drive that is going to be provided to Ms. Boone? Yes, they're, they're broken down by folders. And the folders, are the <coughs> names of the folders, do they match the names in the digital evidence list? Uh, they, they roughly match. Uh, I believe that uh, on there, there may be some slight uh, change of terminology uh, from, I believe, uh, files found on iPhone as opposed to suitcase uh, videos and still shot. Okay, all right. State anything else to add with regard to the digital evidence? Uh, no, I also have a copy of the thumb drive as well as Mr. Lane. Is that different that we've already given him? He had an opportunity to copy it, but this would be uh, that, their copy to retain. Okay, all right. So you can go ahead and provide that. Do you want to mark that as an exhibit for the purposes of the hearing? I guess not, since it's going to be transferred to directly to Mr. Lane. Correct. Okay, all right. You can go ahead and give that to Mr. Lane. All right. 
Ma'am, or Mr. Castori, any other questions? Anything else you want to bring to my attention with regard to the digital evidence? No, Your Honor. Okay. Ma'am, have you had the opportunity to review the um, notice of expected evidence and witnesses at trial document that was just provided to the court and yourself this morning? I did. Okay. Do you have any questions with regard to the digital evidence, which are paragraphs one through nine on the first and second pages of the notice? Um, I don't know what the majority of them are. Um, the Is this part of the evidence that was supplied to me on all of the USB drives that was supplied also? Yes, this is a pared down. Um, all of the items referenced uh, in our notice and provided on the USB have already been previously disclosed and uh, given to the defense. Okay. What Any other questions? Yes. Um, yes, on the USB drives for the laptop, it's not compatible with the USB drives for some of the files, so I cannot open a majority of what are on both of the USB drives. What do you mean you cannot open a majority? What can you not open? I don't know specifically which files. I know that some of them come up as videos, some of them come up as JPEGs, some of them come up as different formats. But there's an entire page of multiple icons that come up, and every time I try to open one, it won't let me review it. Okay. So well, I don't. What know. does it say? I don't. I don't know. Um, I moved on from that to try to go to other programs. So I don't know. I figured it would be something that I might be able to speak to Billy about when he came to see me uh, early next week. So, but I'm just stating to the court now that's one of the problems that I'm having with the laptop. But you said it's a majority. But you can't identify specifics for me, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. What is it that you're not able to look at? It doesn't identify what they are because of the amount. When I click on a particular file, there's a file inside of a file inside of a file. So when I try to open one of the files, all these different icons come up. So if I try to click on one, it says unavailable. So I keep trying to go to the next one, the next one, and the next one, but they're all the same format, so I can't open any of those. Okay. And how many times has that happened? The one time one that file, I, 10 files, 20 files, 50 files, or it was just the one time and then you moved on to something else? I don't know how many files were in it because I didn't bother to waste my time on trying to open. I believe I tried to open about eight or nine of them, and then I just moved on from that folder into another folder. And the other items in the other folder, were those accessible? Were those viewable? For the most part, yes. I haven't, I have not had a I don't know what to, for the most part means. I haven't had time yet to explore everything due to the dorm environment. So as soon as I, in the amount of information, the vast amount of information that he has on there, I'm trying to figure out a way where I can sit in it. I have a letter to you that I wrote to the captain, a copy for you. So you know what I'm trying to work on in order for privacy to be had. So um, I haven't explored both USB drives to the fullest, uh, potential that I possibly can yet. Just from the moment that I have attempted to do so, the one problem I have had was with the one folder with many icons in it. I attempted to open about eight or nine of them, could not, so I moved on to whatever was next. Okay, all right. Hey. The, I could add to that that everything that we have provided on the, this USB file, uh, we have uh, checked, it's all on standard formats. Uh, for instance, the public surveillance video that's uh, referenced uh, in our notice, uh, we included both the original uh, public files from there, and then we also had those files converted to VLC because they are easier to play in VLC. So if she clicks on that folder, she can click again on a subfolder, and she will find the VLC files uh, for where the public's video has been converted. So everything in there should be standard JPEG, VLC, uh, or, and also believe an MP4 or some audio only files. Okay. All right. Um, Ma'am, do you have any other questions with regard to the digital information or digital evidence identified in the notice that the state's provided the court and yourself this morning? That was what was just handed to Mr. Lane. So Mr. Lane, you and I would go over that when you and I meet. I will, I will be meeting with you tomorrow. That I will not be able to transfer this to the spoon through the jail protocol. I, 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 would, I, have, a, I have a remedy for that. Um, with regard to, well, let me, let me finish with the, the digital. 
Uh, any, any other concerns, ma'am, as to the items identified in this notice? Until I'm able to open them and see them, no, I do not. Sure, okay. State anything else we need to talk about with regard to that issue? Uh, not in regards to that issue. Okay, all right. So, um, Mr. Lane, I'm going to ask that you take possession of that jump drive that was tendered to you in court this morning, and you advise the court that you're going to be meeting with Ms. Boone tomorrow. Is that correct? About approximately what time are you going to be meeting with her? If you know? I am. Okay, all right. Um, I have had the opportunity to have further conversations with Major Muhammad at the jail, including conversations regarding the physical documents. Um, Ma'am, are you are are you still requesting cop, uh, hard copies of the documents? I am. Okay. The jail has advised me that they've had conversations with you related to any other property or legal documents that you may need. Have you ever advised the jail that you have everything that you need and don't need anything else? No. One of the um, sergeants came and spoke to me yesterday. Um, miscommunication of some sort where I uh, explained to her what I'm trying to do with purging my property and the property department so I can um, anticipate those discovery hard copies. Was that Tracy Hall? No, that was um, Hall. Her, her last name is Hall. So it was Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, correct? Yes. Okay. But someone sent her to me to see me, so I just don't know who that was. Who was it you communicated with yesterday regarding your personal effects that may have been in a property locker? Miss Hall. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you know Miss Hall's first name? I don't. I don't know any of the officers. Okay. Already. All right. So in conversations with Major Muhammad, they are going to be, be able to accommodate you having your paper copies. So Mr. Lane, I know that you took custody of those and have had them. So tomorrow, when you um, meet Ms. Boone at approximately 9 a.m., you will meet Mr. Mohammed as well. Um, well, let me ask this. Are you able to go to the jail today? Okay, so I, I know for a fact that Major Mohammed is available today and he may be expecting you to arrive today. If you are able to provide to him the banker's boxes that were identified as A and B and that jump drive, and then provide the court with a notice as to when and what time and that to whom you gave it should be Major Muhammad, those items, so we can file it in the court file. And those will then be, the digital evidence will then be provided with the laptop in accordance with the protocol that we've gone over previously and Major Muhammad will make sure that Ms. Boone has access to the hard copies. So after conferring, well, let me ask this. State, do you have any other position with regard to the motion that was set to be heard today, the um, defendant's motion regarding seeking for hard copies? No, you're not. Okay, so for the record then, that motion will be granted, the motion for defendant to lawfully receive, review, utilize, the original hard copy discovery, two boxes A and B, submitted to the court by former attorneys on June 28, 2024, for preparation of trial in her criminal case. As ordered, Mr. Lane will deliver those to the jail today and seek to have them delivered to uh, Malik, Major Malik Muhammad, along with the digital, um, the USB drive with the digital evidence. Mr. Lane, the deposition transcripts of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen were um, purportedly sent to you on August 1st. Did you receive those from Ms. Cashman? Yes. Okay, were they a part of the um, two USB drives that we addressed on August 5th? You had the smaller one, which was everything you digitized from the two boxes, and then you had the larger one of other materials that you had been given previously. No, but I do have a drive that I can put them on Okay, if you could make sure, sir, that when you drop off the other two things, digital copies, I know Ms. Boone has identified that she has the physical copies, but I'd like to give her digital copies just in case. Um, State, do you have any questions with regard to the court's directive to Mr. Lane regarding the hard copies, depositions of the detectives, or the um, digital evidence the state may seek to admit in trial? No, Your Honor. All right. Ma'am, do you have any questions for Mr. Lane regarding those three items? No. Okay. Can Mr. Lane be released? Uh, yes. Okay. If you want to, uh, can he be released, ma'am? 
Um, I guess I'll see you at nine. Okay. Sir, if you could endeavor to do that today, I would greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much, sir.